Welcome to Lasea class. I am your teacher, Jan Lasea. Today, let us learn the Android graphical user control called Action Bar. The Action Bar is a window feature that identifies the user location and provides user actions and navigation modes. Using the Action Bar, offers your users a familiar interface across applications that the system gracefully adapts for different screen configurations. This is a physical appearance of the action bar. It is a horizontal bar that contains action buttons. It has a home button and four action buttons, namely form 1, form 2, Form 3 and Exit button. If you touch or click, for example, Form 1, then it displays a fragment window below the action bar. To populate the action bar with action buttons, we need to define menu items in an XML file. Open the REST menu folder and uh, open up the file main.xml and edit and then add items. The XML format begins with a menu element. You place the action button inside the item slash item pair of element tags. For example, the first action button has a identification btn form 1. We need to name it so that uh, in the code written in Java, we need to reference uh, the, the button name to write a code that will perform an action. And then uh, the property title is set to form1, the show, ac show as action always with a pipe character with text. And then you can specify the icon or the picture or the image uh, alt drawable slash add this is the layout design of the laboratory hands-on activity number seven entitled action bar it implements a linear layout inside the linear layout it has a scroll view to place form fragment. The linear layout has a picture background. I named the ID of the scroll view panel. The action bar is placed on top of the linear layout. The action bar appears during runtime and it is invisible or you cannot see during the design. The scroll view is placed underneath the action bar. When you want to use pictures for background and icons, then the file names must be written in all small letters with no space characters. Place them inside the drawable folder under the rest folder. For example, uh, the folder rest the folder drawable does MDPI. I place the following pictures, like for example, at that PNG exit that PNG IC underscore launcher that PNG that PNG open that PNG save that PNG, and then the uh, wallpaper or the background uh, picture for the th for the linear layout la saya checker that PNG. To place a picture or a icon or a background picture, I should say, um, in the property name background, you write the value alt followed by drawable slash, for example, this uh, picture as a background, the name Lasea Checker with no extension.
and make sure that the picture file name lasaya checker dot png or jpeg should exist must exist in the drawable folder an activity represents a window where user can interact a fragment represents a behavior or a portion of user interface in an activity you can think of a fragment as a modular section of an activity which has its own life cycle it receives its own input events and in which you can add or remove or hide while the activity is running in android mobile application development we call a running software represented by a window as activity like this for example we call the modular window as a fragment this is an activity of the laboratory hands-on activity number seven entitled action bar if we click or touch the form one action button then the form window displayed below below the action bar is a fragment This is the layout design of Form 1 Fragment. It implemented a table layout. The table layout has three table rows. The first row contains a text view. The second row contains a pair of text view and edit text. The third row contains a button. I name the ID of the edit text text customer name i name the id of the button btn close this is the layout design of the form 2 fragment it implemented a table layout the table layout has four table rows the first row contains a text view the second row contains a text view the third row contains a radio group that contains four radio buttons and the last the fourth row contains a button the button close here is um, partially seen in this uh, image I named the ID of the radio group programming radio group I named the IDs of the four radio buttons, namely Radio BTN Java, Radio BTN C Sharp, Radio BTN C++, Radio BTN BB. I named the ID of the button BTN Close. This is the layout design of the Form 3 fragment. It implemented a table layout. The table layout has four table rows. The first row contains a text view. The second row contains a text view. The third row contains a table row. The table, a table layout. The table layout has one table row containing two checkboxes. The fourth row contains a button. I named the IDs of the two checkboxes, namely CHK Mobile and CHK PC. I named the ID of the button BTN Close. The file Android Manifest.xml contains information about the Android project and we can place commands to configure the behavior of the Android application. The three highlighted colored blue properties of the activity must be inserted in this file. In this file. The Android screen orientation is equal to landscape 
will display our mobile application in landscape, which is the opposite of the portrait display. The Android UI options is equal to split action bar when narrow is for the action bar. If there are too many action buttons and it cannot display in a less space, then it will display half of the action buttons on top and the other half will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. The Android config changes keyboard hidden with a pipe character orientation with a pipe character screen size will hide the soft keyboard when it is not needed and our mobile app will change the orientation and screen size to display. When the user click or touch the Form 1 action button from the action bar, it will display the Form 1 fragment on the scroll view so that the Form 1 fragment will perform some processes we must add a java class and write java codes to process something the highlighted line import android.app.fragment is for our class to inherit some properties and methods of the class fragment The class form1 inherits some properties and methods of the parent class fragment. I declared an object view using the class view and object btn close using the class button. Inside the method on create view, the line view is equal to inflator dot inflate r dot layout dot form1 container false will make appear the layout of the form1 fragment inside the method on start i instantiated the object btn close and define a method set on click listener the line view dot set visibility view dot invisible is run by the cpu whenever the user touch or click the close button and it will hide the form1 fragment window. When the user click or touch the form2 action button, it will display the form2 fragment on the scroll view. So that the form2 fragment will perform some processes, we must add a Java class and write Java codes to process something. The highlighted line import android.app.fragment is for our class to inherit some properties and methods of the class fragment. The class form2 fragment inherits some properties and methods of the parent class fragment. I declared an object view using the class view and the object btn close using the class button. Inside the method on create view, the line view is equal to inflator that inflate r that layout that form to container false will make appear the layout of form to fragment. Inside the method on start, I instantiated the object btn close and define a method set on click listener. The line view dot set visibility view dot invisible is run by the CPU whenever the user touch or click the close button, and it will hide the form to fragment from the scroll view. When the user click or touch the form three action button. It will display the Form 3 fragment on the scroll view so that the Form 3 fragment window will perform some processes. We must add a Java class and write Java codes to process something. The highlighted line import android.app.fragment is for our class to inherit some properties and methods of the class 
fragment. The class form three fragment inherits some properties and methods of the parent class fragment. I declare an object using view, using the class view, and object btn close using the class button. Inside the method on create, the line views equal to inflator that inflate r that layout that form three container false will make appear the layout of the form three fragment. Inside the method on start, I instantiated the object btn close and define a method set on click listener. The line view dot set visibility view dot invisible is run by the CPU whenever the user touches or click the close button. It will hide the form three fragment window from the scroll view. The codes for the Android application activity is in the file main.java. The highlighted lines of codes are for the action bar, fragment, menu, scroll view, and toss, namely import android.app.action bar, import android.app.fragment manager, import android.app.fragment transaction, import android.view.menu. Import android.view.menu item, import android.widget.scroll view, and import and android.widget.toss. All the rest, you need to uh, as well encode them manually. The class main inherits some properties and methods of the parent class activity. I declared many objects, namely, as user quit message box using the alert dialog builder class action bar using the class action bar fragment manager using the class fragment manager fragment transaction using the class fragment transaction form one fragment using the class form one fragment form two fragment using the class form two fragment Form 3 fragment using the class Form 3 fragment and scroll view using the class scroll view. Inside the method on create the line set content view r dot layout dot main will set our activity content view to the design layout which is the main dot xml located in the folder rest subfolder layout this line will instantiate the object action bar this line will uh, enable the home button of the action bar this line will set the title for the home button this line will display my picture uh, as a set icon This line will instantiate the object scroll view and it will bind the id r.id.panel, the identification name of the scroll view. Inside the method on create options menu, the line get menu inflator that inflate arm that menu that menu that menu that main and then menu will retrieve the contents of the main menu xml and add items to the action bar if it is present later on we will uh, add items in the file main.xml that uh, contains the uh, menu uh, XML so that uh, our action, ban, action bar will uh, contain action buttons. The method 
On Options Item Selected, Event Handler is where we write the codes to bind actions whenever the user touches or click the Home button and the Action buttons. The switch decision statement will match the value of the item that get item ID to the following case constants. When the user touches or click the home button, the item value matches to the case android.r.id.home. The if statement will test the condition scroll view that get child count not equal to zero. If it is true, then there is a form fragment displayed on the scroll view. The line scroll view that remove view at index 0 will remove the form fragment and it will show the home background uh, picture of the uh, of our uh, main layout which is the linear layout. And that is the behavior of the home uh, button. Upon clicking it, it will uh, show the wallpaper, the background picture of our main layout, the linear layout. When the user touches or click the form one action button, the item value matches to the case r.id.btn form1. The following line will instantiate the object form1 fragment using the class form1 fragment. This line fragment transaction that replace r.id.panel form1 fragment will place the form1 fragment layout inside the scroll view. When the user touches or click form2 action button, the item value matches the case r.id.btn form2. The following line will instantiate the object form2 fragment using the class form2 fragment. This line fragment transaction that replace r.id.panel form2 fragment will add a form2 fragment and it will place the layout of the form2 fragment inside the scroll view. It will appear. When the user touches or click the Form 3 action button, the item value matches to the case r.id.btn Form 3. The following line will instantiate the object Form 3 fragment using the class Form 3 fragment. This line fragment transaction that replace r.id.panel Form 3 fragment will add a Form 3 fragment and it will place the layout of form 3 fragment inside the scroll view and it will appear. When the user touches or click the exit button, action button, the item value matches to the case r.id.btn exit. This line as user quit message box that show will display a confirmation dialog window prompting the user do you want to quit, yes or no. Ladies and gentlemen, let me perform the laboratory hands-on activity number 7 entitled Action Bar. Let us create a new Android application project using the Eclipse IDE. I click the file menu. Point to new and then select Android application project. I name the application name Action Bar. I modify the package name to com bsu.actionbar. 
the minimum required SDK, I select Android 4.2. The target SDK, I select Android 4.2. Compile with Android 4.2. I select the Team Holo Light. And then click the Next button. I click again the Next button. I select and browse the image that I made. And then select and open. And then I click the Next button. I click again the Next button. I modify the activity name to capital M, main. Layout name to small letters, main. And then I click the Finish button. Let us open up first the Android Manifest.xml. I double click the Android Manifest.xml. And then let us insert three properties for the activity. I scroll down below and then select the activity. I uh, go to the activity element tag and then type this property. Android screen orientation equals landscape. Next uh, property, Android UI options equals split action bar when narrow and then finally android config changes equals to keyboard hidden the pipe character orientation, the pipe character, and then screen size. Take note that uh, you must uh, write correctly the spelling and the casing. If it is written in all small letter or capital letter, it must be followed. Let us save and close. Next to that, I browse the folder where I am going to copy these following pictures or images. I select all of them and then I press Ctrl C to copy. And then from the Eclipse ID, I select a draw drawable folder where I'm going to paste. I'm going to select the drawable dash MDPI. I right click and then select paste. Now it is uh, placed under the drawable dash MDPI folder. Next, let us open up the folder values B-11. Open up the file styles.xml and then click the styles.xml. Modify the parent team to Team that with action bar. Save and then close. Next, we open up the folder values does B14 and open up the file styles.xml. Go to the XML code and modify the parent team. Team with action bar. Save and then close. Next, let us uh, go to our main activity design layout, which is this one. Let us uh, change the relative layout to linear layout. But before that, I'm going to remove this uh, text view. And then after that, right click and then select Change Layout. I'm going to select the Linear Layout Horizontal. And then click 
OK. Next, let us uh, modify some, let us set some properties of the linear layout under the properties panel. The orientation, we will select the horizontal orientation. Next to that, let us uh, place a background picture. I type or I will select from the list since I already pasted the images under the drawable folder. I will select alt drawable slash lasaya checker. Now that our background contains now a picture. Next, let us place a scroll view inside the linear layout. Let us uh, click this composite and then drag and drop a scroll view. You notice in the outline that there is a linear layout inside the scroll view. Let us remove that, select it, and then press delete key. Let us uh, click the scroll view and then as you can see, uh, it is uh, in that uh, less space. I want it that it should be uh, filled the entire uh, space of the linear layout. So I go to the properties, uh, the layout uh, width and layout height. We will uh, modify it to fill parent the linear width and linear height to fill parent. We will also uh, set the fill viewport to a logical true. So si simply click that and then select again the scroll view. And we can see that the fill viewport is set to true. There are some padded margins of the linear layout. That's why it, it, there are some spaces uh, around the scroll view. Let us go to the code of the main.xml and remove the padded margin margins. I click the main.xml. I will I will uh, select this uh, Android uh, padding bottom to padding top and then delete. And then Control S to save. Next to that, uh, we will modify the ID of the scroll view. I will uh, name it to panel. And then let us go back to the graphical layout. And we can see that the uh, uh, scroll view occupies the entire width and height of the linear layout. Next, from the scroll view property, we will um, uh, select the mod, uh, set the scroll always uh, draw vertical track set to true. Scroll always draw vertical track set to two. I, I click this uh, uh, checkbox to make it true. Now that we are done with the main layout of our uh, activity, let us uh, go to the folder menu. Under the folder menu, we open up the main.xml and then uh, in this uh, main.xml, we will place uh, some uh, buttons so that it will populate later on our action bar. Either you can type and uh, copy from the pages of the laboratory manual or you could uh, uh, go here to the layout and then I uh, delete that uh, action settings, remove it and then click yes. And let us add a item. I select the item and then click OK. And then we will uh, set some attributes like for example, the ID, we will name it BTN Form 1. Set the title to Form 1. We will uh, assign a icon. Alt drawable slash add and then scroll down below 
Go to the Show as Action, select both Always and with Text, and then click OK. Let us click the Add button. To add another item, we will select the first radio button, and then after that, highlight the item, and then click OK. The second item, we will name it BTN Form 2. We will uh, assign a title form 2. Assign a icon drawable. Slash open. Scroll down, show as action, select always and with text. And let us click add. Let us select the first radio button, highlight item, and then click OK. Let us uh, type the ID name BTN Form 3. Assign a title Form 3. Assign a icon Alt Drawable slash Save. Set the show as action, select always with text. And then click add. Select the first radio button, highlight item, and then click OK. Finally, we will add the button exit. So I will name the ID BTN exit. I will assign the title exit. Assign an icon, alt drawable, slash exit. Set the show as action, always with text, and then click OK. And then click uh, Add. Select the first radio button, and then select Item, and then click OK. Let us count the number of action buttons must be 4. And if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we will delete or remove the last item. Highlight this last pip item and then click uh, remove. And then click yes. Let us uh, check the code written in XML, the, the mirror code of what I have done. And uh, we will uh, read and then check if it is uh, correct. Okay, let us uh, save. If we go to the problems error, and then I double click uh, errors one, and then double click the the line, the this line will commit a syntax error. We will uh, remove these uh, two. Uh, three lines and then later on you will copy the code that was written from the pages of the laboratory uh, manual next we go to the folder layout we will add a form1.xml layout so i right click the layout folder point to new and then select android xml file i will name it form one .xml. And then I will select table layout and then click uh, next and then click finish. The form one should not uh, look like this. It should not uh, look uh, like like this. So, in the pages of the laboratory manual, we need to encode it manually, the contents of the form1.xml. And uh, I will not encode it since uh, uh, my time is limited. I will copy what I already encoded ahead of time and then paste After pasting it, 
we look at the graphical layout. And form 1 will look like this. The layout will look like this. And then let us save. And then we will going to add another form. I will right click the layout uh, folder and then point to new and then select Android XML file. I will type the name form2.xml. I will select the table layout and then click the next button and then click finish. The form2 will not look like this. But uh, I, I, have, I have done my practice a while ago. Perhaps the Eclipse IDE copied the, what I did uh, a while ago. You need to copy the form 2.xml from your laboratory manual. Encode it manually. I will uh, copy and then paste. And then save. And the physical appearance of Form 2 will look like this. It will uh, contain um, text view, radio buttons, plus a close button. Let us add another form. And we will name it Form 3.xml. I click the next this time and then click finish. The form 3 should not look like this. And then from the pages of your laboratory manual, you encode the XML contents of form 3. I will uh, copy and paste because I already encoded ahead of time and then save. And form 3 will look like this. It is a table layout and it contains uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 uh, table rows and then it contains uh, 2 checkboxes, 2 text views and 1 close button. Next, we need to uh, <clears throat> go to the folder source and we will add a class, a Java class. So I right click this package name, point to new, and then select and add a class. I will name the class form one fragment. And then click uh, finish. You need to encode manually by copying the pages of the laboratory manual, the contents of the form one fragment. In my case, I will copy what I already encoded ahead of time. And this is the code of form1fragment.java. Let us uh, close and add another form1, form2fragment.java. I right click again the package name, point to new, and then select class. I will name the, the class form2. Fragment and then click the finish button. I will copy what I already encoded from the past, the contents of uh, form 2 fragment uh, Java, and then paste it. And this is the code that you will encode to the form 2 fragment uh, that Java. Next, we will add another form3 fragment.java class. I will name it form3 fragment. And then click the finish button. I will uh, copy the code of the form3 fragment. And this is the code of form3 fragment.java. Finally, we go to the main.java. And um, in your case, you need to copy from the pages of the laboratory manual the code of main.java. 
In my case, I will paste it. And this is the code of the main.java that I explained uh, previously. Let me save. If I click the problems, uh, there are no errors, zero errors. And let us run and test. I right click and point to run as and then select Android application. The installation of the action bar that uh, APK is successful and it says that uh, it is about to start running that uh, action bar activity but in my case it, it will not run so I, I need to run it manually. I click the mobile apps button and uh, locate the action bar and here it is. I'm going to run it by touching it or Left click it. The action bar activity runs successfully and it displayed in a landscape. Remember that uh, under the Android manifest that file, I placed there a command to display in landscape, not in por portrait. Let us rotate our Android emulator. And here we can see now the picture of the activity with a action bar on top. If I click Form 1, it will display to the scroll view the Form 1 layout. If I click Close, it will hide the Form 1 fragment layout. If I select Form 2, it will display the Form 2 fragment uh, layout. And uh, since it is a scroll view, we can scroll up and down if if it, if it will not fit within the within height of the scroll view. And we can uh, check the radio button. And then I click close and it, it will hide the form 2 fragment layout. If I click form 3, it will show the form 3 fragment layout to the scroll view. I will uh, check the checkbox and then click close. If I click the exit button, it will uh, display the confirmation box. Do you want to quit? Yes or no? I select no. If I click form 1 and then I click the home button, the form 1 will uh, remove from the scroll view. And then therefore, it will show again the background picture of the linear layout, our main layout. If I click uh, form 3, and I click uh, home and it does the same. It will uh, remove the form 3 fragment from the scroll view. If I click the exit button and then I click yes, it will terminate peacefully our action bar activity. That ends our topic for today. I hope you are inspired in my class. Thank you for watching. God bless us.